it's difficult for me to think of, of hearing a voice as a symptom, it's just an experience for me, but if you want to think of a hearing a voice as a symptom, it's the only one you can have a conversation with. This is the way it works for me. When my life gets difficult, my voices get difficult. And it's part of how I experience struggling in the world with whatever it is I'm struggling with. Instead of me framing it as the voices make my life difficult, it's just part of how I experience having a tough time. My voices get loud. The voices change. They're not necessarily going to stay the way that you're hearing them now. So even if they're very horrible and yelling at you or telling you to do things you don't want to do and things like that, that, that can change. It can change two ways. If, if I fight it, uh, they're probably just going to yell louder. And I've experienced that, and that can work for a while. Uh, but what I've learned is that different approaches are more effective. Approaches that are more about understanding what's behind the voice, or understanding in a much broader sense of, okay, I'm hearing this voice, but what's going on in my life right now? That it might be an indicator of something I'm struggling with. And if you can start to focus on that, then it can really start to shift things and get beyond the pain and the uh, perhaps the anger or whatever emotion is coming through in the voice, try to get beyond that to, how might this be useful to me? And a lot of people do start to find that angry voices, for instance, violent voices, are, do have some connection with things that they've experienced that they can, uh, that happened to me, and there's a connection, some kind of connection. It's a deliberate choice to think, not think that there are people who are, I don't know, um, normal and people who are different and broken because that's the thinking that we have if somebody hears voices therefore they must have schizophrenia it's, it's just nuts we're all we're all different we all have different experiences and sometimes those experiences can be scary and difficult to live with but fundamentally we need to stop expecting doctors to fix us that's that part and as doctors you know what, Doc, it's a lot easier when you take the position that it's not your job to fix me, that it's your job to help me find out not what answer is, but what my options are, how to make those choices, and how I can start to steer my own course. Working with a couple of other people, we put together some training where we train workers on how to work with people who hear voices and there's nothing magical in it we're not selling anything it basically comes from understanding that uh, we actually it's less about what do we need to do but more about how do we need to be so like that's how I regard myself I'm the expert in what's going on for me I'm the only person who knows everything that I've experienced I don't understand it all but I use the expertise of other people to help me make sense of that I learned to understand how, when that voice is talking to me that way, it's somehow a piece of information that might be useful to me. So how do I use it? Mm -hmm. And you shift your focus from feeling helpless to how do I use this information? Then it starts to, well there's no, no, no limit to where it can go at.